We're here now in a Bermuda grass field that's been recently mowed down. Obviously, they're going to be haying this, but a lot of folks around the state are using mowing as a weed control uh, for their improved pastures. Darren, you say that's not a very cost-effective way to do it. Uh, mowing is, is not very cost-effective compared to spraying for herbaceous weeds just due to the equipment cost. Basically, there, there's no chemical cost, but it's time and equipment. Some of the normal cost per acre of mowing uh, typically are around $15 per acre. Uh, compared to uh, spraying some herbicides, which typically are, are more in line of uh, 10 to $12 per acre. But now you say we're a little past that window for the herbaceous weeds as far as spraying. Uh, we're probably 30 or, or 45 days past the appropriate window for spraying a lot of the herbaceous weeds. Normally we like to get those sprayed uh, prior to the time that they're four inches tall. But even at the most ideal time, pasture spraying presents some unique challenges. Well, first of all, when you spray pastures, you're pretty uh, much limited to a single nozzle apparatus. If you try to take a boom system out into a pasture, you've got too many obstacles. And the result is danger hitting them, breaking parts. So there's been uh, nozzles designed that you can fit on the back of a tractor or a four wheel ATV system that'll, uh, in a single swath, attempt to cover 15 to 20 feet from the center point of that vehicle. In fact, in the last few years, there's been several major manufacturers that have created nozzles for this purpose. And we threw those into a research study and, and uh, went out, did some pasture spraying. The tendency on a, uh, for instance, on a four-wheel uh, spray system, uh, you're gonna have a very small electric diaphragm pump. And it's not quite capable to deliver the amount of pressure you need to deliver that product at distance especially if you set up a system where you're going to have nozzles going right and left of the sprayer. Uh, if you've got a single nozzle going right or a single nozzle going left, you've got a better chance. But if you open it up to both nozzles, then that pump capacity is pretty limiting and it's hard to get a 15 to 20 foot swath. The other issue we found is with the droplets, uh, the wind is very uh, influential. Uh, obviously, we think about wind and drift, but if the wind was blowing into the face of the spray, it kind of cut down the swath and to where it wasn't near as wide as you'd expected. Or if it was blowing with the spray, it might go twice as far as you expected. And then obviously if there's drift component, uh, just by the nature of that nozzle being set up and pointing uh, to get that wide a distance, you might have some drift that would blow off of that. But Wolf fills these nozzles do have their place. Well, we think they're useful, but uh, probably one of the things that we would recommend the most out of this study was you, you may need to set up the equipment a little differently, get a different kind of a pumping system that would allow you to have more control over the pressure so that you could uh, have better uh, droplet uh, selections uh, for drift uh, prevention and also for the ability to get the coverage on the target. However, Redfern reminds us that weeds tend to be a symptom of a deeper problem. If you've got weeds that are causing you some loss of production in a pasture, typically we go a little step further back and look at some of the other issues that may result in those weeds being present to begin with, uh, such as improper fertility or, or low fertility. Uh, and in grazed pastures, uh, we look at overgrazing as reasons for the increase in the population of weeds. Okay, so you're saying basically we can do a lot of things in our management of the pasture to take care of the weeds where we don't have that cost. Uh, that's so, true. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm, uh, a lot of people accuse me of being, well, you know, he, he doesn't want to spray pastures at all. That, that's not really the case. Uh, but if you have weeds there, uh, normally, um, you, to get better weed control, uh, you can control the weeds with herbicide and then come back with some proper fertility that will then allow the desirable forages to be more competitive. Uh, competitive forages are, are a pretty good method of weed control also. All right. Now, what about perennials? I know that's a whole different situation. Uh, perennial weeds are, are a lot different situation. Uh, normally, the, the difference being the perennial weeds are going to come back year to year. Mm -hmm. uh, they do tend to be uh, in patches more than the herbaceous weeds. Okay. Uh, the perennial weeds are going to be uh, unpalatable. So if they're present in a pasture that's grazed, uh, the livestock are not going to graze them to begin with. Okay. Uh, if they're present in a hay field such as this one, uh, even after you mow them, they're going to grow back. Okay, uh -huh. So it's important with perennial weeds to go in and control them with chemical. Now the good news about that is, is they typically grow in, in clumps or patches. So instead of going in and spraying the entire pasture, you can go mm -hmm. in and, and spot spray these, these right. species. Maybe even go out there on the four-wheeler and kind of hit Four-wheeler would be, be an excellent option. All right. Darren, it's great information today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.